Welcome to Pen and Gadget. This is a very special little pen from Mont Blanc. I'm gonna mess up the name, so I'm gonna read it off of the box here. It is the Mont Blanc Heritage Rouge, and it, that would be an et, but Rouge et Noir Baby Black Special Edition Fountain Pen. This is in fine, as you see here, and the color black. So, this tiny little pen is, I believe, the only pocket fountain pen that Mont Blanc currently makes. Now they have older versions that this is, I guess, built up after in resemblance, uh, something like that. You cannot get it with this. I, I added this snake here. Um, the other heritage, there's a full size heritage and I'll flash it on the screen that has a similar snake to it that's actually like a functioning clip. This just happens to be something I got online that I thought would finish off the look. Now it's not original to Mont Blanc, but it was kind of Julie-ish and uh, Julie-ish, Jules Bedazzle, whatever you want to call it. I, I wanted to add a little pizzazz to it. However, I will not do the review with this on. Let's slide it off. It's actually not that tight on there. By the way, if you want to add some kind of a roll stop. That's what this is. This is a roll stop, uh, you know, in general for a pen. This is actually a ring and you can buy these online. They, there's all different kinds and you basically just with some force squish it down as hard as you can until you get it to the diameter that you need it to and then gently slide it on. What I would also do is put a little rubber cement, little tiny dabs of rubber cement that turns into a little soft padding so that you don't scratch up your pen and then you could just slide it onto the cap Anywho, that's that's a little side tip for you there. We'll leave that there. But here it is. Here's the baby. I will I will be calling this uh, uh, the Rouge et Noir baby. This is their lovely little dome. Now, th the particular heritage, I guess, line that they have out, they all have this red and white star, the, the Mont Blanc star. Very different from, from some of their other models. I was torn between the white and, and there was, there's a white and yellow gold. So there's ivory colored whiteness, and then the trim is gold. Uh, and this is the platinum gold version. So this is the black with platinum gold. I, I chose this because it's just, uh, it's a little bit less flashy and, and a little understated, but still very, very nice. Anywho. Moving on, let's uncap. The first thing you'll notice, it is a push-pull cap. Here we show off the nib. Beautiful, beautiful nib. Signed 4810, as all Mont Blanc nibs should be. We have the Mont Blanc old-style logo there with the mountain. And then we have the 585. Gold, AU, stands for gold on the periodic table of elements, if you didn't know what that was. And then we have uh, the STOD, which is another little maker's mark for Mont Blanc. Moving on, there are a couple of things here also to note. That, uh, I, I say this a lot. I apologize, dust. I'm renovating and sanding wood floors in my a hundred year old house. So it's hard to get some of the dust to go away, but here we're gonna get up super, super close here. We see the serial number and then Mont Blanc. And then on the other side, uh, I forget where it is on the other side. Is it on there? No, it's down here. Uh, let's go and we'll get, it'll say metal. Thanks Germany for letting us know. <laughs> and then of course the made in Germany. So that's overall the, uh, the insignia and writing on the pen body. There is nothing on the cap, I believe. It is just a nicely designed cap. There is a liner in there. I'm not exactly sure. Get all the way up in there. Uh, yeah, you can see the liner right there. It's a little off center. When you put it in, you'll see that it actually grabs already there even though it's centered, see it's grabbing, and then you push. Very satisfying little click, that, that push 
um, and the pull. Uh, I, I feel like there's some metal on metal going on. I haven't noticed it scratching anything though, so it, it's probably well designed, but it snaps on pretty nicely. And then uh, some people thought that this was a piston filling pin. It, it, it is not. This is just an area that's a screw ring. It's got just these tiny little threads to help thread to post. So that's that's actually really nice for a, a pocket fountain pen is the quick release of pulling off the cap, but then the secureness of the threads. A lot of push-pull caps end up having a push-pull uh, post to, to post. I don't like that. It usually ends up that they come off, they come loose, they're not comfortable. Anywho, this is nice to have the little screw. This is a heavy pen. It's 31 grams. That's like shocking in the hand. I, I was like, oh, this is, this is heavy. It's, it weighs as much as like my Supra does, if not even a little more in its small position. So this really feels quality in, in the hand. I got to tell you, there's, there's like, I guess the king of, and I know there's a thing called king of pens or whatever, king of fountain pens, but this is the king of pocket fountain pens from Mont Blanc. I, I, there is, uh, this is not a cheap pen by any means, anywhere from $800 to $1,000, depending on the color. So yeah, this is, this is an upper end fountain pen, especially as a pocket fountain pen collector. This is on the high end of a pocket fountain pen. Moving on. The nib is in fine, although I will have to say the fine on this particular pen feels to me like a medium comparing it to my other pens. So I, I feel like this is closer to a medium than a fine. Let's move on to measurements. I will, I will start with it. Let's, let's jump on in here. So posted. We'll get a measurement here of one, two, three, four, and 4.75 posted. It is a small pen. My hands are fairly decent sized hands here. It's about a 10 inch spread. Uh, it's not bad in the hand. I think comfortable. The section is a little on the smaller side than I think I would like it to be. I, I feel like the section size should have been this thickness versus this, the, the taper down, I think I feel it a bit. And it, it's, it's not uncomfortable, but not the most comfortable pocket fountain pen that I have. Anywho, <laughs> we will also, it, it's very few threads. It's, it, it goes on very smoothly and it's like half a turn and it's off it's very quick. So let's do the capped measurement here getting it in one, two, three, and f just under four, three point like nine, I would say. And then in its tiniest form, which I currently really like the, I guess, overall shape. I, I kind of wish they made this just a tiny bit longer and maybe made the cap a little bit shorter to compensate. And, and cause you would just maybe be able to get like another half an inch here and you might be able to write with it unposted. Like I can do a lot of my other fountain pens, even though it's very small. Yeah. I, I, this is beyond that threshold. You, you lose control. You could do it for, a, you know, a couple of words or something or ticking off boxes, but I, I wouldn't actually write with this, uh, without it being posted. It, it this really does need to be posted. Uh, not, too dissimilar from the gravitas quirk it, it this is too small to write without it being posted that also has a screw on to post uh, uh you know not option but you know that's how it's built so that yeah that's how that works i know i'm waffling on let's get a let's get a measurement here one two three and less than a half uh 3.4 i would say inches to the uh the the I guess tip to tip, right? Uh, on the end, it's a, it's just ever so slightly flat. It still feels very, very smooth, but there is a little flat spot there. 
and overall very nice design i i have some some gripes with it but overall very very tasteful very very high end uh, i'm going to move on to moving inside the pen now unscrew and you'll notice immediately here let's see if we can jump on in you'll notice that part of the cap I mean, part of the cap, part of, part of the body is left behind. There's this little ring here. Now, it doesn't feel, now that, that's, that's, I think, plastic. Uh, I, oh, oh I, I should mention, this is a metal bodied pen. Both the cap and the body is metal, as you can see on the inside. And then there is a lacquer that is the finish. So the black is lacquer. So this is, I'll do this once. Let's do it. Let's do it near the microphone. Yeah, that's when you tap these two together. You can hear that these are indeed metal. So this is a lacquered uh, black lacquer on top of the metal. Let's unscrew this here. Now this is inked up. I'm going to be careful. There's some threads still screwing up and it shot open. The reason being is inside here. Let's see if we can see it. Down in that center there, that's a spring, that, that center circle. And it protrudes outwardly, and it adds pressure. And I love this design. In fact, I have added in some of my other pocket pens this uh, a, a little spring at the bottom to keep... Because this is a notorious thing. Sometimes these little converter, Not converters, but, you know, these little capsules... I don't even know what these things are called anymore. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. These cartridges sometimes break loose, especially especially for a pocket pen that's literally in your pocket and bouncing around. This thing could be released. So they put a little spring right at the bottom there. You cannot fit anything else but a regular standard international short uh, cartridge. Uh, you know, it, it is mostly... A normal thing. I don't think there's any real useful pocket fountain pens that also have any other option for converters. Usually they're too long or they're, they're a weird shape. So yeah, this is this just standard. I don't see an O-ring of any sorts, but I think this this little piece acts sort of like an O-ring, at least a little bit. But yeah, the, it that spring is adding pressure up into here. Now I noticed something weird, and I'm going to mention this. I had two different kind of Caveco branded. Let's see if I can grab one here. No, I can't. Um, Caveco branded ink cartridges. And this is one that I refilled and then there's another one that wasn't. They're supposed to be the same size, although one of them was very loose and the other one was tight. This was the tight one. So I don't know what that is all about. And maybe there's something to do. I, I don't know. But it did take me a little effort to push this one in where the other one was too loose and was actually coming off. Anyway, that's a, another reason to have that spring on the inside. Let's put this back together here. You do have to add a little bit of pressure and then screw it. So you need two hands firmly on this guy because it's so tiny. Again, showing off that nib. This is a 14 karat gold nib, solid white gold which is lovely. Okay, let's move on real quick. I'm going to cap this. The presentation is quite lovely. So I'll give you the unboxing experience without the pen being in the box. So again, you're going to get a plain, this is, this is the full way it shows up. Basically, you get a plain white box with some serial numbers and information. And you use your little thumb tab here. Now, there are a couple of different versions of these boxes, I think. This is the one I got. So here we go. Now, this is kind of like a Russian doll thing. You'll see in a minute. But you've got this box. Then you've got from the Heritage Collection, Mont Blanc. Then you slide this off. <laughs> and then you've got uh, another thing, Mont Blanc. And then a nice embossed. Uh, you know, star, Mont Blanc star right there. Some people call that the snowflake. 
officially it's called the star from Mont Blanc. I call it the star, but people call it snowflake. Uh, Mont Blanc has mentioned it snowflake, but yeah, it, it, technically it is the star, the Mont Blanc star. So then you push on either side and you slide over it and there's another box. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, so you'll you'll end up with this. I don't want to crease anything here. I'll try to pull this up gently. So you'll get the Heritage Collection book, which is in multiple languages, and some nice drawings, and some other information. Ah, there, that's exactly what I was talking about earlier. I'm, I'm sure I flashed that photo already, but yeah, they, they have that snake on there. And then in here, there's this spacer which just slips out and then in here <laughs> it keeps going you've got this 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 soft it, it kind of looks like um nasa fabric uh from the spacesuits it's got that kind of look to it and then in there you have the service guide which uh is another booklet like this just the standard mont blanc service guide this is where your pen is going to be then you open this up oh, it keeps going <laughs> And then you got <laughs> another thing that's sealed with the Mont Blanc star sticker. And then you open that up and then your pen will be inside. <laughs> so yeah, there, there is, there is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of, look at this, look at this. This is, this is a lot of stuff here, but you get, you get a lot of packaging materials in a relatively small box, mind you. So they really do have kind of a presentation, a um, build up, if you will, to getting your pen. Now, I wouldn't keep the pen in this thing. Maybe if you put it in your pocket just to protect it from scratches. But this offers no protection. And it's also, compared to it, super tiny. It's almost half the, the, the size. So, yeah, I, I like that they had... The, the cardboard thing in there. If this was just bouncing around in there, I wouldn't have liked it. The cardboard actually holds it in place. So we're going to put this back together relatively quickly here. This little thing slides into the gap. That goes down. Then this goes on. Oh, my. And then we do this. If I could do it on camera. Oh, no, don't crease anything. Let's do it the other way so we don't crease anything. Okay. And then this. And we'll just keep this in the corner over here okay moving on <laughs> let's get to the writing sample now we've got a fresh page here we will uncap and nice little twist to post and let's jump on in get my glasses going let's see how well or not well i can write with this pen now this is inked up i have written with it before but let's do just going to call it the baby. <laughs> Mont Blanc baby. And this is in fine. Overall, soft feeling nib, very soft. And in fact, it's, it's very springy, like very springy, but it's not, you can't get like line variation. Let's do a couple of and then I'll add pressure. So you can get some line variation. It does not write well upside down. It, it feels scratchy. I, I mean, it, it just honestly, this is a very scratchy feel. Very scratchy. And I, I like to write small when I write upside down because that's what it makes me feel like I should do. Yeah, it, there there is definitely tooth to it upside down. I would not, I would not write with this pen upside down without having it polished to do so. I, I think it's just going to pick up a lot of gunk and ultimately probably block your uh, nib up after a while because that, that's very scratchy. Let's go to ABCs. Yeah, I, I feel like, again, this is teetering on that medium size nib. I don't 
feel like this is a true fine. I feel like this is edging on the medium side. Uh, it also responds well to pressure. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on it, but it is a very soft feeling nib with this gold nib here. Let, let's do some line variation. Writing very lightly. Then adding pressure, adding pressure, adding pressure. Yeah. So there you go. You've got a little bit of line variation there. Hmm. Very smooth. Very smooth. You could write it with a very light touch. I don't feel like there's any improvements that are really needed other than the tip. Uh, I should say the top of the nib needing to be softened to write upside down and get that extra fine slash close to fine type of feeling. We'll do that and then we'll do. So yeah, same, same kind of pressure and you can see the difference obviously in lines. Uh, and this is just doing pressure, pressure, and then upside down. So yeah, overall, very, very nice. I think this is one of those things that if you have a collection of other po pocket fountain pens, and let, in fact, let's, let's do a comparison. Let me cap this guy and let's bring out the other heavy hitters in this size realm. I got a few here. You see a theme? <laughs> Let's jump on in. Oh, sorry, hitting the camera here. Yeah, this is one of those pens that fits right in the middle of, I think, everything. I think its size really does lend itself to being quite useful as a real pocket fountain pen. Being gentle not to scratch anything here. And then we'll, uh, I need another box, another Mont Blanc box. And we'll size these up. All righty. So there you go, in more or less size order from the Quirk, uh, Gravitas Quirk Up, the Mont Blanc Baby, the Supra from Coveco, and this is the Axel S from Spoke Design. And that's basically your lineup right there. Nice, nice little selection here. And then we'll do... I And I did reviews on all these other pens. I was a little hard on this one only because I love it so much. The design, oh, I think it's nearly perfect. Uh, visually, this is this is on, on the top for me. But let's get these lined up here. Oh, you see, I always want to unscrew this one, but I just need to pull and then it's screwed post. We'll get these lined up. Now I did change the nib on the spoke design, so you will see a different nib on here, but it's the same length, it's the same number six size. Same for the Caveco. Alrighty, so having these all laid out here, Mm -hmm. We'll gently roll these over. Oh yeah, yoy. Some of you might be cringing. Don't scratch up all the pens. And some of you don't care about scratches. I do. So we're gonna do a little rotate. Line them up to something that resembles a line here. Let's use another Mont Blanc box. Okay, and there we go. That's a that's your lineup right now. And we reveal, oh yeah, in size order from smallest to biggest. There you go. That's what we would imagine. This is a different size nib. These are all size six Yovo nibs. And then this little guy, I don't actually know what size this is. It's bigger than the small Caveco. I think this is technically like a number five. I, I should do some research and look it up, and maybe if I do find the information, I'll flash it on the screen. But yes, this is a slightly smaller nib. It also has something interesting. It's flat. I mean, super flat, if you can see. It doesn't have that curve 
that other nibs have. Like, yeah, it looks kind of flat here, but you can see it, it points down a little bit or up a little bit, depending on the thing. But also they have a lot of curve. This one is, is in comparison, much flatter, but still gorgeous nonetheless. Okay. Yeah, so overall, beautiful, beautiful pen. Uh, really feels good in the hand. I tell you, if this was made out of precious resin or something else, this, it would be too light. You need some heft with these small pens just for the writing's sake. Now, some people, maybe they're going to disagree with that. I wholeheartedly, and so does Mont Blanc. Uh, yeah, I, I think you need the weight. The, the weight is a good thing. It also makes it just feel like it's worth it. Now, again, not cheap. This is this is in the eight hundred to a thousand dollar range. I, I believe the white ones you can get uh, for about fifty dollars more direct from Mont Blanc. However, they're out of stock, so you will have to go hunting. And there is a premium for the white versus the black. The blacks again, you can pick them up. They're also out of stock for the fine. I think you could get it in medium, so it's going to be even thicker than this one. Yeah, they, they are collector's items. They are limited edition. They come in, you know, this lovely <laughs> Rue Goldberg, no, not Rue Goldberg, but, you know, Russian doll uh, type of box collection here. Overall, very, very nice. There's a lot of detail in, the, in just this knurling. It's very nice. Oh, the, the dust. I'm so sorry, guys. Let's get up in there. Yeah, overall, just just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. I'll, I'll do a, a close-up of all of this. I got some black ink in there, as you can see. Inked up with the Hungdian black non-carbon. This is what I use for all of my reviews, so it's consistent. Just just a lovely little pen. Now, design-wise, not 100% for me. And this critique only from my personal view, I feel like this is doing what, what I complain about a lot with pocket fountain pens in that the cap is too large, both in diameter and in length. I feel like this should have been somehow a little bit skinnier. And it is possible because th these pens do it. So it's not impossible. Some people like this um, looking glass type of thing, you know, this telescope type of thing where it's bigger, medium and smaller. You know, th there is a there is a liking to that. However, for me, I'm not one of those people. I, th I think it looks beautiful like this. And I kind of wish that the overall length of the cap was maybe a little bit smaller and the body a tiny bit longer. I, I feel like that would have been the right choice. Uh, Mont Blanc, hire me. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, th there are balances that you need to figure out when, when working on and designing a pocket fountain pen, especially uh, at this caliber. So yeah, th there are some things that I don't like about it. Overall, I feel like the cap, again, it, this is, it, it, it settles right here. Look at all that extra space. I would have rather it, it come down this, you know, this far and made the pen body a little longer, you'd still have the same posting length and, but you'd gain holding it and without having to cap it right now. It's just, just at that border. Now, if you have smaller hands, obviously, maybe you don't have this problem, but for, for a guy with, with decent size, big hands, this is, this is not happening. I, I cannot write like this, like I can with the others unposted. This is just too, too small. So yeah, I would, I would lengthen this a tiny bit and I would shorten the cap. There doesn't need to be this huge air gap in there uh, to, to keep air sealed in. You don't need that kind of a volume. There's already enough volume around there. So engineering wise, yeah, I, I would have done that. That's my critique overall. And I would have made this a little bit thinner uh, in in size. Uh, maybe maybe if it was just shorter, that would have created a balance, design balance. I know this is a long video and I'm talking on a, a, a lot about it, but I feel like there aren't really that many in-depth reviews. There's a lot of reviews that just kind of unbox it and show it off, but they don't really critique 
depends as much as I do, but I like that. I think people need that critical uh, view on life. Anywho, <laughs> now let's move these all out of the way here. That is the Mont Blanc. Oh, no, I'm not going to be able to do this. The <laughs> this is what it is. <laughs> the Rouge et Noir Baby Black uh, Heritage Special Edition Fountain Plan, Fountain Pen in, in fine nib in black. Oh, boy. <laughs> anyway, this has been Pen and Gadget saying sayonara.